All right, so hi everyone. My name is Kara. I work here at the Quag Wildlife Refuge, and I'm really excited to talk all about turtles, which are an amazing group of animals. And before we get started on turtles, I did want to give you all some background about the Quag Wildlife Refuge, which is a nonprofit nature preserve. We're dedicated to environmental education, and we teach a lot of programs throughout the year, uh, both on site at the refuge. And we go off-site as well, and we've been doing virtual programs, which has been really fun. So the Quag Wildlife Refuge was established in 1934, and we, our mission is to serve as responsible land stewards of the refuge property and implement environmental education. So in, at the refuge, we are open. Our trails are open from sunrise to sunset every day of the year. It's always free to visit. And our nature center is closed to the public. So uh, our nature center can be visited. It used to be visited, uh, you know, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday. It has been closed since last March, but we will keep everyone updated on our website in case our nature center opens soon. Um, that's where I am right now inside of our nature center building. But hiking on the trails is a great way to visit the refuge. We're located in Quag, which is right between West Hampton and South Hampton, right on the South Fork of Long Island. So the Quag Wildlife Refuge gets its name from the town that we're in. And this is a photo of our nature center building, which sits right over Old Ice Pond. It has some beautiful views of our freshwater pond. Um, and you can still come and see the building if you visit. So we have seven miles of hiking trails if you combined all of the trails and the longest loop is three miles. We have some really special habitats here at the refuge and they're pretty diverse so you can visit freshwater ponds. We have the dwarf pines at the northern end of, of our preserve and that's a globally rare ecological community. So you can visit with lots of plants, many wildlife, um, different species of animals live at the refuge both all year round and also they'll migrate. So we'll see osprey and different types of animals here at the refuge. These are some recently seen wildlife. So we have the silvered haired bat at the top of your screen, green heron, white tailed deer, uh, wood ducks, frogs, really special types of orchids and of course you know lots of different birds all year round but and today we're going to talk about turtles and again you can visit us in any season it's always free to visit the refuge and we also take care of permanently injured wildlife like the ones that are on your screen these were all animals that we've taken care of now and in the past all of our animals that we take care of are permanently injured. So that means they have had injuries or maybe they're missing wings or part of their eyesight. Some of them are too used to people and that's why we take care of them at the refuge. The two turtles that you'll see on your screen are actually two different types of tortoises that we take care of and both of those were surrendered pets. So uh, we are going to meet some turtles today, of course, at the end of our program. And I'm just going in to share my screen of our turtle program now. But again, if you have any questions, please feel free. You can ask them in the group chat and I'd be more than happy to answer any questions, um, both about turtles and about the refuge. All right. Okay, so the photo on your screen right now is of one of our African spurred tortoises and his name is Mortis and he in this picture was chowing down on some kale. But turtles are an amazing group of animals. They're in the family Chelonia and that comes from the Greek word that means interlocking shields of armor. So if you've ever seen a turtle, a tortoise shell or a turtle shell, um, it looks like they have armor on their back, which is their shell. It's great protection. 
And before we get started, that was an awesome question that I see in the chat. What, what is a wildlife refuge? Uh, and that just means that it's a protected space for animals, uh, for plants. So a refuge is a place that's safe for animals and plants. And our wildlife refuge, uh, we don't allow any hunting or fishing. We don't allow dogs here because even the smell of dogs will scare wildlife. So it is truly a wildlife refuge. All right. So turtles are, again, an amazing group of animals. The, this picture is just showing, it's kind of an artic, artistic version of uh, some folklore that some Native American tribes had regarding how a turtle came up from the bottom of the sea and with it on its shell carried the world and that's how the world was created. But um, so there are turtles are really important in culture and also uh, in, in an environmental sense too. So World Turtle Day is on May 23rd, but I thought we could celebrate it today. So that's my joke of the day. Um, but there are many different turtles and sea turtles in North America. And on Long Island, we're going to talk about some that we have native to our area as well. So World Turtle Day was actually created by the American Tortoise Rescue. And just to spread the word about how amazing these animals are and how they do need human help. So we can help turtles in a lot of ways and we'll talk about that a little later in the program. So turtles, tortoises, terrapins, those are just some words for, different words for types of turtles and they're all in the same family. But I wanted to share some of these photos on your screen because it shows you how diverse and how different turtles can be in their adaptations. And adaptations is just a fancy word for the characteristics that help them survive or how they live in their environments. So at the top of your screen, that tiny tortoise is called the speckled padloper tortoise. And it's the smallest tortoise in the world. So you can see it's in someone's hand, right? They're holding it. It's really tiny. And it is around four inches big when it's full grown. So that's really small. They live in South Africa. The largest tortoise in the world is right under there. Can you see that tortoise that's right next to the horse? It's so pretty amazing, right? How large the Galapagos tortoise is. Um, they are around 800 pounds when they're full grown. They can be six feet in length and tortoises live for a really long time. They can live over a hundred years easily. The, there is another type of tortoise called the pancake tortoise, which is really flat and fast. That's why it's called pancake because it's very flat. Um, and the pancake tortoise is also from Africa. They're from East Africa. And in our, in our minds, you might imagine why would a tortoise want to be or need to be flat? And the reason is because uh, they will fit into rock crevices or in, in between rocks to hide from predators. So that's really handy for the pancake tortoise. And then the leatherback sea turtle, the one that's the picture that's on the beach there with the people in the background, the leatherback sea turtle is the fourth heaviest reptile they can weigh thousands of pounds and they love to live in the open ocean. So they'll be eating jellyfish out there in the ocean. They'll come onto the beach to lay their eggs. And then below the leatherback sea turtle is the giant soft shell turtle, the Yangtze giant soft shell turtle. And they are very endangered. They're the world's rarest turtle. And they're critically endangered, which means there's not as many of them in the world as there used to be. Unfortunately, some turtles are hunted by people. Also, they might not have as much habitat as they used to, which we'll talk about later in the program. Um, and again, they are endangered. But look at that, those, look at how different all of these turtles and tortoises are from each other. And they're in the same family. That's pretty amazing. 
And if you're just joining us, thanks for joining us. I did want to just say again, my name is Kara. I work at the Quag Wildlife Refuge, and this program is being recorded. And feel free to ask any questions in the group chat, though. So some more. Um, the one that was on. Uh-huh. The one that was on the beach was big huge right amazing the leatherback uh -huh. turtle we can even go back to look at it pretty amazing when you compare it to the people behind it and it is ginormous even the one with the horses oh i know isn't that amazing to think about that's bottom that's below the giant one is really flat <laughs> i know i know it for sure Awesome. So we're going to, uh, the, the other two, you guys may have noticed, uh, one has a really long neck. That's the Rhode Island snake necked turtle. And again, they're really endangered. And then we have the pig nose turtle, which looks like it has the snout of a pig, um, which is really cool. Again, another freshwater turtle. So turtles can live you may have imagined they can live in fresh water, salt water. Some turtles only does, live on land. Why is the, the why is the turtle on the other page? Mm -hmm. Why does the turtle on the other page have no shell? It looks like it doesn't have a shell, right? But it's actually um, the the leatherback sea turtle and the soft shell turtle have more skin and more. It's more of a scaly skin than a big shell, right? Exactly. Okay. No, I understand. Great. So, and then these guys, it does look like they have a real shell, right? Made out of bone, and some it looks like they don't. So which is pretty amazing. And then this is an example of comparatively, right? If we think of a person and the Statue of Liberty, that's the same comparison in size or the same ratio of a leatherback sea turtle to a small a four inch turtle like the speckled padloper tortoise. So pretty amazing. This is just a bonus slide because I thought this was really cool. So inside of a sea turtle's this, mouth. The Statue of Liberty is in New York City where my grandma lives. Yes, you're right. You're totally right. So absolutely. The Statue I've, been on, I've been on the boat before. Awesome. And I saw the Statue of Liberty when yeah. I was a, a little tiny baby. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> awesome. Well, I, I don't know if you guys have ever seen inside of a sea turtle's mouth, but this is what it looks like. It's called papillae and it's not teeth. It's just um, these little tiny spikes that help them digest their food. So when a sea turtle eats something slippery like a jellyfish, uh, it needs these papillae on the inside of their mouth so that when they eat the jellyfish, it won't just accidentally come back out, right? So it holds their food down and helps them digest. It looks like almost a dinosaur with giant teeth. It does, right? And turtles are reptiles. So they are cold-blooded. They get their energy and their heat regulation. They're, they're the warm-blooded. Yeah. They're, they're cold-blooded. They're cold-blooded. You got it. They are cold-blooded. Exactly. So on the inside of a turtle, a turtle shell is, of course, their organs just like us. But I want, did want to show you guys this so that you can imagine um, on the inside of a turtle shell is not a home, right? But it is their body. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. Some, some things to learn or some words to learn about a turtle is the top of the shell is their carapace. And I'll show you a shell that I have here. So uh, this is the top shell. The bottom of the shell is called a plastron. And this shell doesn't have the bottom, but it does, it is connected to the top of the shell. 
and a turtle shell grows with them for their whole life. So they can't take their shell off. Uh, animals like a hermit crab are born without a shell and then can choose a shell as they get larger from a snail. But turtles, their shell is a part of their body. So it grows with them as they uh, get older and older. And on the top of a turtle shell is these tiny puzzle pieces. They're called scoots. They're structures that are kind of like our fingernails. They're made out of keratin. And then our turtles don't have teeth, but they do have a beak. And that is very sharp and it's hard. That allows them to eat things like fruits and maybe other animals, fish. So here you can see some arrows that are pointing to the top of the shell, the bottom of the shell, which is the plastron. Some turtles can close up their shell. Others can't, like a snapping turtle can't close up their shell. They have arms and legs and a tail. And then they do have eyes and a tympanum, which is a non-visible ear. So they have an ear, but the tympanum protects their ear so that they don't get water in it. They don't get other things like leaves in their ear. So um, it kind of like frogs have a tympanum as well. They can still hear, but you can't see their ears. It's an internal ear. All right, so you may have heard me already say some different words, turtle, tortoise, terrapin. All of those mean different things in different places. So we like to say that there's no right word for a turtle. They can be pretty much used interchangeably. And this family of animals is 220 million years old. Um, so turtles are found in fossil records. They, like someone said, they look like dinosaurs, right? And that's because this family is really old. They have been on earth for a very long time. And all reptiles breathe air. They have scales, they lay eggs, and they are exothermic or cold blooded, like we were saying before. So uh, turtles are usually aquatic. They have webbed feet and they have streamlined bodies. Tortoises are mainly terrestrial. They have these round stubby feet. I like to say they look like elephant feet. So tortoise feet are really good for walking and they live in dry, hot habitats. And terrapins are aquatic and terrestrial. Sometimes they live in brackish water, which just means that it's a mix of salt water and fresh water. But again, in different countries, people call tortoises turtles and the opposite. So that's why we say that there's no right word for turtles. So the native species or the ones that live in our area in our in New York State and specifically on Long Island are some of these turtles on our screen. So the Eastern box turtle, the snapping turtle, painted turtle, diamondback terrapins, spotted turtles, and the Eastern mud turtle. And terrestrial, that is a great question. Terrestrial means that they live on land. And if we break that word down, terra means land. So terrestrial just means that they live on land. And aquatic means that they live in the water. All right, so starting with the snapping turtle. This is the state reptile of New York. So it has stocky legs, long claws, and, and actually webbed feet that allow it to swim. So that would give you kind of an indication or help you know that they live in water. They like to live in freshwater ponds, lakes, rivers, and streams. Um, at the back of their shell, they have a sawtoothed edge, which means it's kind of spiky on the back of their shell, right at the bottom of their shell. And their shell length can usually be between 10 inches and 16 inches, which might be the size of a really big dinner plate. But I've seen some snapping turtles here at the refuge that are really large. Um, so they can grow 
in 40 years time, they'll be full grown even, even before then actually, and they can get really big. So they are our biggest turtle that we have in our area. And when they're born, they're around the size of a quarter. And I have a, a photo of that. Can you guys see in the, the um, person's hand, that's a hatchling snapping turtle next to a quarter. So they're born when they hatch out of their eggs they're really small and they don't need any help from a mom or a dad tortoise. And that's true for most reptiles. Most reptiles don't need any care from their mom and dad, like mammals do, right? We're mammals and we stay with our parents for a very long time. But reptiles are born and they have instincts, wild instincts, that they know exactly what to do, what habitats they should be in and what to eat. So if you ever see a baby turtle, they don't need any help. They know exactly what to do. And the, the picture of New York State here shows in those little yellow squares that cover all of New York State, that's where snapping turtles are found. And again, they have a very strong beak. So you can see the, the adult snapping turtle is holding its mouth open and it has a very strong jaw. So if you ever see a snapping turtle in your, maybe when you're hiking or maybe when you're driving, even with mom and dad, um, snapping turtles, it's a best idea to give them lots of space. If they're on land and they see a person, they might get very nervous. And the only way to protect themselves is by using their strong beak. Um, and sometimes they'll hiss and try to walk away. But in the water, uh, if, they, if we were swimming maybe in a spot where snapping turtles were, they would sense that we're so much bigger than them and they would just swim away from us because um, a snapping turtle doesn't want to be around a predator like a human, right? So snapping turtles are really amazing to see. And of course they do breathe air. So if you're in a place that has snapping turtles, you can look for their head to come up above water because they do have to breathe air. And I was saying earlier in the program, I actually saw my first snapping turtle of the season yesterday. So it's gotten warm enough that snapping turtles are coming out of hibernation and you might start to see them. But these turtles will lay their eggs out of the water, of course. So they'll come out of the water, dig a nest, lay their eggs, usually in April and May. So that's something to look for too. And that is one reason why turtles will cross roads because they're trying to find a good spot to lay their eggs out of the water. So the Eastern box turtle is an amazing turtle that lives all over Long Island. They're one of my favorite animals. And one way to tell that it's an Eastern box turtle is they have this beautiful orange and brown, sometimes it's yellow, sometimes it's more brown shell. So you can look for that beautiful shell. They have a highly domed shell. And this is a box turtle shell that, that I showed earlier. So it's higher than other species of turtles that we have here. And um, again, it's usually brightly colored they look a bit more like a tortoise. So they have that big domed shell and um, they will spend their life on land. So again, they are terrestrial, but they can swim. So, I mean, sorry, they, they take baths and um, in, in shallow water, but not like snapping turtles, they can't swim. They don't spend their life in water. So they have feet that are really good for walking and digging though. And they're a smaller type of turtle. So they grow to be around six inches and they can live for 40 to 50 years and sometimes even over a hundred years. These Eastern box turtles will eat fruits in the summertime, mushrooms, bugs. They'll eat lots of things on the forest floor and they're omnivores. So they'll even eat, like we we're saying bugs, but also, uh, animals on the forest floor, eggs on the floors, forest floor. And one way to tell if you have a boy turtle or a girl turtle is by looking at the color of a box turtle's eye. So if it's a red eye, it's a boy or a male turtle. If it's a brown eye, it's a girl. 
So the turtle on our screen looks to me like a boy, so a boy turtle. And these box turtles are called box turtles because they have a hinge on the bottom of their shell that allows them to close up their shell like a box so they can fit their head, their arms and legs inside of the shell. And that's really good because it's great protection from predators. So predators like raccoons and red fox, uh, that's great protection for a turtle. So here's some more photos of eastern box turtles. They live in the, the Long Island, but also the a little bit into upstate New York. And I thought together we can take a turtle promise today. And this is because sometimes people will illegally or they're not supposed to take turtles out of the wild. They'll keep them as pets, which is really bad for the turtles. And that's why sometimes on programs like this, we'll take a turtle promise. So it says, I promise to leave turtles alone unless I'm helping them cross the road. Please don't keep wild turtles as pets. All right, so this is a turtle that lives in the water. They live in fresh water, sometimes in marshes and ponds and lakes. This is called the painted turtle. And they're called that because it looks like someone took a paintbrush and put some red and some yellow on their shell and on their face, which is beautiful. And they don't grow to be much larger than five to seven inches, which is the size of a small dinner plate, right? So they are smaller and they can live 25 to 30 years, but sometimes up to 50 years. And painted turtles are, are one of the most common turtles across North America. So you'll see them all over. And you'll see also the hatchlings a lot. Um, so let's see, you can see they're really tiny again when they're born. Um, you can even see though when they're born that they have that already, they have that beautiful color on the inside of their shells. And when they lay their eggs, they'll lay sometimes 10, 12 eggs, sometimes more in a nest. The mom turtle will cover up the eggs with dirt. And sometimes turtles will lay a decoy nest. And that just means that it's a fake nest with maybe one or two eggs in case a predator comes, say a raccoon, and eats some of the eggs. Maybe she'll have another nest in another spot so that those turtles will survive. Spotted turtles are, are, are in our area, but they're very rare. So I've actually never seen a spotted turtle on Long Island, but they do live all, you know, across the island, but they're very rare to see. Um, they're not as common, so there's not as many spotted turtles in our area as there used to be, but they have yellow polka dots across their shell and across their head and neck. And each spotted turtle has a unique pattern of spots, kind of like a, uh, kind of like a cheetah, right? And they live in shallow wetlands, so shallow water. Uh, they uh, sometimes live in bogs and in flooded ditches, and sometimes vernal pools, which fill up in the springtime. There's not a lot known about spotted turtles, so there maybe scientists aren't sure how old they live because they're very rare to find or rare to see. And um, in the photo, in the photo with the turtle with his eyes closed, you can see that turtles they do have eyelids, so they can close their eyes. And even our tortoises in our greenhouse that we take care of, they'll sleep with their eyes closed. And um, so these spotted turtles, again, they're more rare on Long Island, but they can be found in upstate New York as well as kind of on the Canadian border up there. Another rare turtle uh, is the mud turtle, and they are called that because they love to live in these very muddy areas, shallow water. They are much smaller than some of the other turtles. They grow to be three to five inches. And uh, they have a very smooth shell that doesn't have a keel. So a keel 
it just means that this area on the top of their shell, it's almost like you can see the spine, right? So here's the spine on a turtle and a keel sticks out like this. Um, and on the bottom of their shell, they have two well-developed hinges. So this is another turtle that can close up their shell. And you can kind of see that on the top picture where he's closing up his shell. Um, we actually are going to meet a mud turtle after we go through some more photos. And I want to show you something really cool about the mud turtle that I think you're all going to like. Uh, the diamondback terrapin is, uh, so this is the only terrapin that we have in our area. And that usually just means that terrapins are turtles that live in brackish water, which means a mix of salt water and fresh water. And usually salt water and fresh water are mixed together in a tidal marsh. So marshy areas and estuaries, bays, and they are one of the most beautiful turtles, I think. They have this beautiful pattern on their shell that looks like diamonds. And their skin is gray with spots and they have white lips or a white mustache on their beak. And that is another way to tell that it's a diamondback terrapin. When they hatch from their shells, turtles have an egg tooth uh, or a sharp, sharp part on their beak that they're able to um, hatch out of. And then they'll, of course, come out of the nest and these turtles will go right into the water. And diamondback terrapins live along the coasts. Um, so they'll live in estuaries again, in marshes, beaches, you'll see diamondback terrapins on. And something that's really great, at least in New York's, in the New York area, was that um, these are now, these turtle excluders are basically just a rectangle that allows a turtle to get out of a crab pot. So when people go, you know, fishing for crabs, they put this cage down into the water with some bait to, to trap the crabs. But turtles will go inside to get the bait and they won't be able to get out. And that's really dangerous for a turtle because they need to breathe air. So now it's required that you have to put on this excluder so a turtle can get out if they accidentally get into a crab pot, which is great news. And then since Long Island is so close to the ocean, we have to talk about sea turtles that swim off of the coast of Long Island, like the green sea turtle, the hawksbill, loggerhead, Kemp's Ridley, and the leatherback sea turtle. So in the summertime, uh, when the waters are nice and warm, turtles will come up the coast to start feeding on grasses, on eelgrass in our area. And we don't see them very often because sea turtles don't come onto the beaches here in, in Long Island. Um, but in the winter time, when the waters start to get cold, all of these sea turtles can get cold stunned, which basically means that they didn't make it out of the sound or the ocean in time to go you know, southward, maybe off the coast of Florida. So sometimes sea turtles will be found in the wintertime on the beaches, and the best way to help them, I have a slide in a little bit, um, but you can call a really special number. Let me see if I can get there. So you can call a number, the, the Atlantic Marine Conservation Society, and they can come and actually help the turtle. And you don't want to warm it up. You don't want to warm the turtle up on your own because that would be a really uncomfortable for the turtle, but you can call the specialists and they can come and help. So turtles lay their eggs on land and we got to see some pictures of eggs. And depending on the species of turtle, they might lay one egg at a time, they might lay 200 eggs at a time. But the turtles that we have, the snapping turtle, box turtle, painted, all of those nest in May and early June. Um, and I did wanna show you all, this egg, which um, I'm going to hold a little bit closer to the screen, but this egg is actually from one of our tortoises that we have at the refuge, and it's it's from a uh, our red I'm sorry our yellow footed tortoise laid this egg, and there's no baby on the inside. It's just preserved to show the eggshell, but 
certain eggs will look different. Tortoise eggs are usually really round and eggs from box turtles and snapping turtles are more oval shaped. So the eggs stay in the nest for two to three months and then they'll hatch from the nest and they're ready to go. So in, in different places too, the, the, when a turtle is born, when they hatch, it can be determined by temperature. So this is um, a concern I know with global warming is that as warmer temperatures on in the in our world heat up, um, they're concerned that maybe no more boy turtles will be born because the sex or the gender is de determined by the temperature of incubation. So if it's warmer, more girls will be born. And if it's cooler temperatures, more boys will hatch out of the nest. It's very interesting though. So if you find a turtle, the best thing to do is to give it lots of space and just enjoy looking at them from far away. But if it's injured, you can call a rescue center. You can call us at the refuge and we can help find a rehabilitator for you. But never keep a turtle in your house. It is illegal. It's not allowed to have a wild turtle as a pet. And just to help them, we can watch out for them while we're mowing the lawn. Um, if it's safe and you can help a turtle, if it's crossing the road, if you're with, you know, mom or dad, or if it's, as long as it's safe, um, you can help bring a turtle to the side of the road that it's walking. So you always want to um, pick a turtle up and move them to the side of the road that they're in the direction that they're walking, even if there's no water there, because they might be trying to lay their eggs. And they will always go in the direction that they want to go. Even if we brought them somewhere else, they continue to try to find um, to find an area that's that's where they want to be. And uh, you and you can have turtles as pets, just not the wild species that are in our native tortoise turtles that are in our area. So um, sometimes turtles are sold in pet stores and they are hard to take care of. But um, so it is allowed, though, to to have certain types of turtles as pets, but never our species that we talked about today. And then again, uh, these are some hatchlings species that we talked about, they do look really similar to each other when they're so tiny. But again, uh, they don't need any help from people. They know exactly what to do. The best thing for us to do for them is to give them lots of space and leave them where they're born. So again, uh, this, these are some resources for our local area. If you find an injured turtle, um, the, the first two places, the Turtle Rescue and the Wildlife Rescue Center, are great resources to call. And for sea turtles, if you find a cold stunned sea turtle in the wintertime, um, both of these uh, resources, the Riverhead Foundation and the Atlantic Marine Conservation Society, are great places to call too. And again, um, if you're in a different area, if you're on this program in, in a different area, I'm sure there are places that you can call and we can even help you do some research if, if you wanna know those places. So otherwise, some ways to help turtle, turtles are to protect their habitats, turn off lights if you might live near the beach, um, if you live near bodies of water, that way they're not attracted to the lights, especially as hatchlings. And of course, cl we're cleaning up our environment. That's really helpful for any wild animal. Um, we don't want to take turtles out of the wild. We want to keep them where they're born and uh, just enjoy them and spread the word. We can learn more about them. And supporting science, um, supporting GPS tracking to learn where tortoises go is turtles, tortoises, because we want to protect everywhere that they are. So beaches, islands, the ocean, all of those habitats are important for them. And if you do decide to get a turtle as a pet, uh, it's important to remember that they live a very long time and they can grow to be very large, especially tortoises. So always do your research prior to purchasing a pet. Uh, they need the proper diet and habitat. So I, I always recommend 
other types of animals over turtles as pets. Or if you're really interested in getting a turtle as a pet, you can adopt one that needs a home. And this was this, the painted turtle that I saw out on the pond today, out on Old Ice Pond here at the Quag Wildlife Refuge. So uh, this was exciting because this week or last week too was some of the first time this season that we've been seeing the wild turtles come out of the pond. So sometimes you'll see them basking on the sun like this painted turtle was doing today. All right, so we're gonna meet some of our turtles that we take care of. And I'm just gonna um, turn my screen to be a little bit bigger and I'm gonna show you some of our turtles that we have. So we have a box turtle that we're gonna start with and our box turtle was actually kept illegally as a pet. So I'm gonna get him right over here. All right, so here's our box turtle and he is a boy. So can you guys see that he has these bright red eyes? Yeah, so he's a boy box turtle and someone found him in the wild and they thought that he would make a good pet, which, right, box turtles don't make good pets. They should always be left in the wild. But he was kept as a pet for such a long time, around 10 years as a pet, that now he wouldn't know when to hibernate. And in the wintertime, turtles have to hibernate because there's not as much food and it's very cold. So that's why we take care of this box turtle. And you can see though that he has these bright yellow scales and that beautiful shell that will help him camouflage in the forest. So he would walk around the forest floor and camouflage perfectly with the leaves and the sun shining through the trees. So you can also see his beak that we learned about, right? He has that amazing beak. And one of his favorite foods is actually hard boiled eggs. Does anyone here love hard boiled eggs? Yeah, <laughs> right? So he loves to eat hard boiled eggs and also fruits like strawberries, raspberries. So that's why we have our Eastern box turtle that we take care of. And then I have another turtle for us to meet. Um, the turtle that I'm gonna take out now is actually a freshwater turtle. So I'm gonna grab him. All right. So this is a mud turtle. Has anyone seen a mud turtle before? No, right, they, they are one of the rare turtles that we were talking about. And they are very tiny. So you can see he, he does fit in my hand. This is the turtle that has a very smooth shell. And I wanted to show you on his backside, on the bottom of his tail, he has a little nail. Can you guys see that tiny little nail? So it, it might be hard to see on the screen, but on his tail, he has this kind of like our fingernails, a nail that scientists don't really know why mud turtles have that on their tail, which is pretty amazing. So it could help them maybe when they're in the mud or around other turtles. But this turtle has webbed feet that you can see that helps him swim. And they like to eat bugs. They like to eat different types of things that might fall into fresh water. Yeah. So did anyone like the box turtle the best? What about our mud turtle? Awesome. All right. Well, I'd be happy to take questions. Um, I am just going to stop recording and then I'd be happy to take some questions.